Now in the last 20 years, you will find connectivity became a very important issue that what I do on the computer in the very good old days was local. I could, if I had to transfer it, I will collect it on a, a media and then I will move it to the other machine. Now that is not the case. We have got connectivity of different kinds. The first one which was developed as a hardwired connection between the different computers was the Ethernet. Okay, and that is like a, a ring connection, there are different star connections, there are different topologies of this connectivity, but essentially a wired connection and the data was transferred by digital form from one computer to another computer or from mainframe to the subcomputers. The next one which is very important is the Wi-Fi. Now this is wireless. And earlier, it was like a open source and one could do it, then the security became an issue. And therefore, if you are using a Wi-Fi connection or if you are using any of these wireless connections, you have to use some protection. Otherwise, the, the hacking that happens, I don't know how many of you are familiar, but the, the biggest problem for all the data that is around the world is the security of the data. And cyber security has become a very major issue in the world, whether it is financial data, whether it is uh, military data, whether it is administrative data, whether it is scientific data, securing that data properly is not so easy. And therefore, these Wi-Fi wireless networks which we have, I think some of you also wanted in the hostel the Wi-Fi connectivity and uh, I suppose it is available to you in some form. If it is not, I will try to work on that also. Wide area networks are basically when you look at the large installations, like for instance, you find DRDO, Defense Research Development Organizations. They have 40 labs, all different places, so you'll find they have got their own wide area network. So this whole field of networks is a topic of one course itself and some of you will probably in the third and fourth year will go about it. Now what you see on the left hand side is the, what I want you to imagine and understand and hopefully in the labs we will be able to show you the hardware. The first thing that you see in a computer is a case. Obviously whether it is a desktop, whether it is a laptop, whether it is a tablet, you will find there is always a case. Now it looks like very simple but that is not so simple because the electromagnetic radiation and some of the interference that can happen can be affected by the material that you choose for the case as well as the heat transfer. I don't know how many of you know but these chips have become now so miniaturized that the intensity of the heat that is generated because when you send the electrical energy there you will find that part of it is converted into heat and the heat intensity is very large and therefore dissipation of the heat or cooling becomes a major issue. In fact, some of the old pieces, if you see there was a fan there, so to extract the heat out of it. So you will find that the design and the selection of the material for the case is not a simple job. And therefore, the first thing that you see is a case. The second most important thing is the power supply. Now every computer, as you know, that the electronics is working on the DC and you have got the power supply which is AC. It could be 240 volts, 50 cycles as it is in India or it could be even 110 volts or frequency could be also 60 cycles. So both in terms of frequency as well as in terms of the level of the voltage throughout the world it is not the same. It has got different standards in different countries and therefore you will find that the power supply will take the input which is the AC input and convert it into DC. Again, the heat uh, dissipation in power supply is also very important. It looks like a transformer, but essentially it's a block. And that is the second important thing. The third part that you see in a computer is what is normally called as the board. And for some reason, it has been named uh, always as the motherboard, actually, sort of. You know. And that is the picture of a motherboard that you see of a PDP-11 which is a very old computer actually. Now the, this motherboard has got different chips on it. And you will find that if you study the motherboard, you will get to know all the elements of a computer. Okay? And those elements I'm going to introduce very quickly, but essentially you will find that the motherboard has all the chips and all the chips represent the different functional units of a computer. And there will be some slots which are vacant. Because sometimes what happens is future expansion slots 
are also kept on the motherboard. It is not like it is full because otherwise you have to throw that motherboard, get another one. It's a bit of expensive proposition. So you will find that that is another expansion slots on the motherboard. Now there are different storage devices. You will find that the disks that are required when the data is required, the data is stored either in the memory or on the disks or the storage devices. These storage devices again over the years have changed and I'm going to run through them and give you a quick exposure of what are the different kinds of storage devices. I remember that we used to use the floppies. The floppies are gone, the five and a half inch floppies are gone. Then there were small floppies which were used, they are also gone. Now you have got the stick, uh, the stick I use and put it over there. So I have my data on one inch or less than an inch stick actually. This is something uh, Moser Bear has created. All the data is on this and this is something which is the wonder of electronics and how these devices are built, what are the designs of it will be done by the students who will study more in electrical and electronics engineering. Then we have got variety of input output devices. We have got different input devices, we have got different output devices. After all the machine interacts with the human being through these input output devices and a large number of input devices, a large number of output devices we are going to study. You will find that they are outside this motherboard, I have not shown them because I will show them separately to you actually. And each device has to have a controller. You know, any physical device when it is working or communicating with the motherboard, there is in between hardware which we generally call as the controller. So all these devices will have their controllers. Typically you will find that the architecture of a computer is a subject in itself. Actually. And you will find that variety of these architectures, how to design, what kind of problems you have in different architectures, how to overcome them, there is, if you overcome them, there may be some other problems. So you will find that variety of issues of data transfer, the rates of data transfer, the speed, the efficiency, the finite, all these machines are ultimately finite. So when you are dealing with a finite machine, you will find that there will always be the considerations of architecture. And recently we are also now worried about the networks because you will find the computer networks have become, if you just consider the world, the world is nothing but a networked world. Today you will find in the good old days if something happens uh, in a college or a campus, uh, people outside will take about a day or two to know about it. Nowadays if something happens within a fraction of a second throughout the world, it is known to everybody. And that is because of the computer networks. So you will find that these networks have changed the world. It has brought everybody together and very close to one another. If anything happens in one part of the world, immediately it is flashed and everybody knows instantaneously. And this is the power of the networks actually. As a diagram, this is a very simple but important diagram. What I was talking to you so far, uh, functionally, a computer consists of these following blocks. The first one is what we call as the central processing unit, CPU. That's like the brain of the computer. All the uh, decision making, all the data uh, comparison, processing, every logical function is carried out in the CPU. It has got two subcomponents. One is for arithmetic logic unit. Generally, it is called as ALU. And then the second one is what is called as the control unit. And this is like the real coordinator of all the things that happen in terms of humans and the computer. Then as I told you <coughs> that there is a memory required and this memory has got different varieties and the memory is used for uh, processing the work. Imagine that you, are, you have an office or in your, in your room you have got a table and you use the table to put your books, to put write down the notebooks etc. And then you also have got a filing cabinet. So you may put your books there or you may put your file folders there or you may put some back there etc. So you'll find that is your data storage, the external storage. While what you put on your uh, working table is the memory. So when you are actively using it, that data is kept on the memory. There are different kinds of memories, we will talk about it. While the external storage is like the data which is kept outside and stored for a longer period of time. 
Then you have got different input devices. Keyboard is an example of an input device. Joystick is an example of an input device. You have got that webcam, for instance, on many computers. You will find that's an input device. So there are a variety of input devices and there are a variety of output devices. In fact, every year there is a show in Las Vegas and thousands and thousands of people go there to see what are these different input output devices. <coughs> lot of funky output devices and lot of funky input devices. You may not see them, but for special applications they are used actually. So this is the basic, basic architecture. It's kind of a bird's eye view. Obviously, it requires more further analysis and details, but for this course, we just want to introduce to you 